done. Manchester United. It's a sharing up. And so far, it's funny. And it's off, saved it. United again. Ready? Welcome to United Are, your official Red Cafe podcast for all things Manchester United. Um, I'm Ed and it's another one of my sort of opposition chat podcasts and I'm here with Simon who is a happy Spurs fan. Um, good evening. Hi Ed. Um, yes, I am very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine you are. I mean, it's not often you beat us. It's not often we lose 6-1, let alone to Spurs. No, uh, well, I'd say it's we don't often beat you at Old Trafford at all, really. No. And then, I mean, it's unheard of to beat you 6-1. It's just a bit of a freak result. Yeah, I, I mean, I have seen you beat us at Old Trafford, at live at Old Trafford. but it, And it was probably one of the best games I've ever been to. But um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't happen often. No. At all. No, it is a bit of a rarity for us. Um, so I guess we'll just sort of dump, jump into it. Really, um, we'll go. We'll we'll talk about um, thirty seconds into game, a minute into the game. Was it? You know, you, you've you've conceded an early penalty. What are you thinking there? Um, well, obviously, I'm really disappointed. I mean, I went into the game quite confident. Actually, I, I thought we had a really good chance for a result, and then. Um, you know, you guys get the inevitable pen- inevitable penalty um, mm. early on. And yeah, I was gutted. But at the same time, I thought, well, you know what? They're always going to get a penalty because that's just what United do at the minute. Um, so we might as well get it over and yeah. done with as early as possible. Um, but yeah. I was disappointed. Um, and then you start thinking, oh, goodness, is it, it's just going to be one of those days for us. Yeah, and you know, that's exactly what I thought. It's, it's <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> on the opposite side of the table it's going to be one of those days and we're going to you know we've had a slow start but actually now now we've we've come up against an opposition that's you know going to properly well normally an opposition that's going to properly test us obviously we were well and truly tested by Brighton and Palace it certainly but, were yeah um, um you know I, I thought you know here's the reaction we're going to we're going to show what we're going to do this this season evidently not and Maguire has, I mean, yeah. that yeah, that was that was really poor, really poor. Special, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it was a total shocker. I mean, let's be honest; it, it was an absolute disastrous performance from Maguire. Really, from from the first goal right to the end of the match, I just thought he was he was all over the place. Mm. I I, I think I think. He, I don't know if it's because he doesn't trust the players around him, or if he's, if it's just his ego. But he always has to be the guy to be on the end of the ball. Always has to be the guy walking the ball out of defence. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's fine. That's part of his game. But the other bit, you know, last season he gave Bayer a concussion, just elbowing yeah. him in the head yeah. for no reason. And he was pulling down Shaw and just it, it, well, it exactly. just seems quite yeah. clumsy, you know. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So. You you get that that gift gift absolute gift of an equaliser yeah. and and um it goes and was it crops Kane on and it's do you know I'm happy with him making that foul because where's Kane going to go what where where are you going to go from there yeah. apart from pass it to Son yeah. but stand over the ball it's what it's basics that I mean I know the guys have talked about it in other pod. But you know what? What did you make? I mean, it was great play by Kane, but it was. I mean, it was it was very clever and quick thinking from Kane. Um, and obviously, Son still had a lot to do, but he he finished it superbly. But um, yeah, I mean, it, that's basic stuff. You know, you would expect somebody to have gone close to the ball and blocked that off. You know, mm. um, that's the sort of stuff you learn when you're a kid. You know, it's it just seemed to be a lack of concentration from your guys, and yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. You know, maybe I'm sure confidence is low at the minute. You you can see that. You know, they're a bit brittle when things when mm. things start going their way. The heads seem to go down. You know, there doesn't seem to be that big leader on on the pitch for you guys at the minute. And I know I know Maguire's yeah. the the captain, but 
and, and he, as you say, he does maybe his trying his best to, you know, be that guy. As you say, to try and lift people, but it's just not it's just not working. And then when he's having such a poor game, um, you're looking around then for someone else to to try and pick it up, and um, there just wasn't anybody. So, so actually, on that, what do you reckon to Maguire then? Because I know a lot of people sort of were sick. Of, I'm sick of him. And I, and I know a few of the guys in the, the pod are. Yeah. Do do you think like I mean I've not I didn't watch him much for Leicester. I'll be yeah. honest, and but I have seen him for England, and I I don't recall an England game where he was as bad as he is for us. So, he, well, what do you reckon? I think um, first of all, you you overpaid for him quite a lot. Well, yeah, yeah, um, definitely. But, as a player, I think I think he's not bad. I think he's a a fairly average, you know, Premiership level defender, but he's also mm. reasonably decent on the ball. Um, the thing about when he was at Leicester, I always felt he had a very strong uh, defender beside him, and I, I mm. I'm not sure whether he was the guy at Leicester. He was barking the orders at the other defenders, you know, telling them where to be and organizing the defense. I always got the sense right. with him it was the other guy was doing that. If you know what I mean. Um the yeah. likes of Evans or someone like that, um, who who yeah. was with him at that point, um, seemed to be more of the guy who was, you know, shouting and getting people moving about. So now now is his chance to do that, you know, at a club and it, maybe he's just not um maybe he's not capable of it, I don't know. No, and I I, I was happy to give him the benefit of the doubt last season because uh, individual area errors are fit forgivable in my opinion. Yeah. You know, you you learn from them, but it just seems as though those individual errors have multiplied. In the we've conceded almost a third of the goals in our first three games than we did our entire season in the Premier League last yeah. season. It's, it's strange. I mean, when I look, when I look at your team and your squad, and it's been like this for a few years, I I never look at your defense and think, oh, that's an absolutely amazing defense. You know, no, but. But you always tend to have a really good defensive record, so you're obviously doing something really well. Um, mm. And I don't know whether that's the strength of your midfield and the fact that your your right back and your left back tend to be quite defensive, and you know it's a really solid unit there. Um, but that obviously it's fallen apart this year for some reason, and I think whatever cohesion they had um, just has gone. And I think it's maybe down to just confidence, you know. Um, mm. So. You know, you aren't a bad defensive team. You know, you've proven that over the last few years. You're you're very strong defensively normally, so I'm sure you'll get it back. But you're yeah. going through a really bad patch at the minute. There's no doubt about it. Mm, no. So I guess, I guess we'll move on and we'll talk talk about the red card. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I'm I'm fine with the red card. It's exactly what should happen because that yeah. kind of behaviour isn't appropriate but do you do you think Lamella should have been sent off as well I think we were lucky um I mean probably the ideal situation there would have been to you know give them both a yellow card and yeah. talk to them and, and that would be the end of it um mm. so I mean it's a bit unfortunate that Martial got sent off however when you look at it I mean you know you just can't do what he did um you know, he, no, no, of course not. But at the same time, I mean, Lamella obviously connected with the arm. Um, yeah. But I think Lamella was very cute, you know. Um, he knew exactly what he was doing and it totally paid off. Um, yeah. And although you, you don't condone these things, at the same time, when it's on your side and it's your player, it's, um, it's yeah. you, you, you do a wee smirk and you think, yeah. well, okay, that's a bit dirty, but we've got a red card there, happy days, you know. That that's yeah, the reality yeah. of it. Um, what, whether you really think it's great or not. Mm. So, do do you think that also ties into? I, I'm going to assume that you've watched the Spurs documentary. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Do Do you think that ties into Mourinho's endless be a c- team talks? Yeah, I, I I think that probably has had an impact. I, I mean, Labella himself is a sort of player that always puts himself about a bit, is a little bit clever and, you know, he does niggly files on people all the time. He's running and slamming himself into people and just basically being a nuisance. 
Um, but mm. the thing about him is he's never been sent off once in his whole career with Spurs, which is absolutely unbelievable, the way he plays. Mm. So he's, he's very clever at it. Um, and I think Jose loves players like that. Um, oh, yeah. And Lamella, really, if he can stay fit, could be a really important player for us. But yes, generally, obviously Jose said, look, you need to go out, you need to be strong. And as you say, physically. So um, they are they are taking that on board. And, you know, they, they seem more willing to put themselves in those sort of positions uh, mm. um, and just really frustrate the opponent um, and, and just, you know, be a bit nasty. Out of curiosity, actually, when that when when Mourinho was saying that, did you get the impression that that's sort of the moment when Ericsson decided he's leaving, he's <laughs> definitely leaving? It did look a bit like that in the footage. You just saw his face and he had this strange expression on his face. I did laugh when I saw it. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I think I think Ericsson had, had realised he wanted to go for before Jose came in, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that well, probably sealed the deal. I don't know. He's not that kind of guy. No, no. Yeah, I just it's just a fantastic clip, that really, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was very funny. The the red card happened and then Spurs won six one so that's all we <laughs> <laughs> no I mean I don't you they played well they play I mean yeah we did before the red card and maybe before the second goal I don't know we we def we cert at one one we certainly had the lion's share of the possession yeah well and I I never felt you were in control of the game though. It was very open. Yeah, no, I'll agree with that. And I think that because, I mean, Spurs were clearly wanted to play as on the break, which is fine, yeah. you know. But at the same time, I also felt that if we got the next goal, then it would be our game. And I don't, like, I think we would then be able to play you on the break because you'd have had to come out more than you were. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's possible. But really, I mean, we got the second goal so quickly after the first one. Um, absolutely, and yeah. then I mean, we absolutely destroyed you, Sam. Really, from that yeah. point on, um, yeah. you were all over the place, and we were just mm -hmm. we were really ruthless. Yeah, oh, I, th I think a lot of the players just sort of gave up, really. Yeah, well, certainly they, they seemed to after maybe the third goal, it, it was game over completely, and they were never going to get mm -hmm. back into it, you know. And then no. with uh, all these subs in at half time, that sort of just cemented to everyone that. You know, he had given up on it as well, so yeah, I think we'd switch to damage limitation, yeah. yeah. And I think, I, I mean, I'm fine with that to be honest. You well, yeah, yeah, I can, I can see why he did it. You know, I'm not, I'm not holding that against him. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it in a bit, but I, I think you know, look, look at the Liverpool result 7 2. The, yeah, I think the table, the top of the table in particular, is going to be very tight this year, and goal dif it could come down to goal difference, yeah. So, you know. Attempting to do a bit of damage limitation there makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, yeah. Although we did score another two, I suppose. But yeah. I guess the yeah. way things were going, it could have gone. It could have been the cricket score, like. Yeah, absolutely. So we've we've talked about that now. We've got it out of the way. You've been, you were gracious last time because we beat you, and yeah, it's 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 good to get one back, you know. Yeah, um, and we'll move move on to transfers. So I, you know. You had, I'd say you've had a good window. You you weren't doing the well. What was the classic levy levy of dodgy deals on the last day yeah. of the window? Yeah. Um, you know, it seemed planned. Yeah. Apart from perhaps bail, which seemed a bit opportunistic, but yeah, it did. I mean, um, I'm very very pleased with the transfer dealings that we've done. Um, this one, I'm really pleased. What what I liked about it was really, as you've said. It seemed very planned, you know. Um, the the players that we most needed, uh, which I think were Heiberg and and Doherty, you know, we really needed that yeah. defensive solid midfielder, and we obviously needed something at right back, other than Aurier. And to mm. get those two players in as early as we did, just really made me pleased because it it showed that yes, we know what we need, and we're going to identify who we want, and we're going to get them as soon as we can. Um, and that was quite different really to to what i've experienced as a spurs fan for a very long time so so yeah. that was a really nice change and then obviously when we started getting rumors that bill was maybe maybe gonna come you know um nobody could believe it really i certainly didn't believe it 
Um, no, nearly until no. the day he signed, I still couldn't quite believe we would actually do it. So for actually to get Bale and then Regalon as well, he looks he looks fantastic um, from what I've seen. But but mm. Bale coming in, I think, is such a sign of intent for the club. Yeah, it, I think it is. It, it's really really impressed me. I have to say, and it's it, it's it's lifted everyone. I mean, I know he has he hasn't mm. played yet, obviously because he's injured. But just him being there, I think has yeah. has hugely um, improved our play and everything just because everybody's just lifted their game um, and it's very exciting I have to say and then um, we've obviously got a striker in as well now which we've been absolutely dying for for quite a, yeah, a long yeah. time well exactly I mean you, it was just for, for, for about half, a third of the season last season it was just some wasn't yeah, it yeah that's right um, so I mean when you look at the window as a t- as a whole, I mean, I I think it's probably the best window we've had. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I mean, the last time we had a window like that was when we sold Bill, and we got all those yeah. different players. And and to be honest, when you look back, probably only Ericsson and Lamella were the only successes there out of the six or seven players. I th- and I think this time it's a bit different yeah. because they're players that add depth they are. as opposed to yeah. players coming in to be first team players. And it's it's a much di- it's so much different when you're adding depth as it is to yeah. bringing in players to and expecting them to gel and get going to win the points you need. We now have a very, very strong squad. Um, for mm. years, Spurs were known for having a great first team, but being yeah. weak, you know, outside of that. And I, I would agree that's exactly what the problem was with us. Now, when I look at our squad, we've got really good players, two for every position nearly. Um, mm-hmm. which is unheard of really for us um, and you know we, we did bring in first team players as well as squad you know yeah. Dockery's come straight in as right back you know Bale's obviously going to come straight in um, mm-hmm. Hoiberg looks absolutely fantastic at the minute he's just straight in and, and he looks like he's been there the whole for seasons many seasons he's, yeah. so it's, it's just been great I'm very very pleased I have to say and do you know, you made you touched on that point that Bale coming in gave everyone a lift, and you know you can see players playing better on the pitch simply because it's given the yeah. I think I think it's it's given the players a sense of belief. I think, um, and, and when you get a, a player like Bale coming into the squads, you know I think it it makes everyone think this club's going places. You know, and yeah. um, that I think psychologically is actually quite a big thing. Yeah. And, and and I think conversely for us, you know, we we haggled with Dortmund for maybe a week, then decided we'll play we'll play it by ear until the last week of the yeah. the window. You, you know, we when you chase a player so publicly, you sort of have you have to end up with them. Yeah, you know, sign in. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't say it makes us look like a laughing stock. Some of the other guys would. I don't know what you think of that. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult one. I mean, you clearly wanted him, and everybody knew you wanted them, but you were in mm. this situation where it it appears you couldn't afford the cost, or you didn't feel it was worth what the what cost, they were yeah, saying. Yeah, and you know, really, what in hindsight probably would have been better was that some sort of announcement or you know leaking something to the press that you have moved on to new targets or mm. earlier on you know maybe six weeks ago um yeah. and then that would have been the end of it you know um and you could have focused on looking for another sort of right wing player or whatever um mm. but instead you've had it dragged out nearly to the end of the window really um yeah and you're building up the anticipation of the fans and the media obviously are on it and it's only going to lead to huge disappointment for everyone, you know, um, which I'm sure it probably has. I'm sure people are gutted about it. Yeah, I mean, I maintain a fool's hope that perhaps perhaps we spent our summer budget on Bruno in January and our uh, next summer budget will be spent again in January on, on um, Sancho. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, I, I, I think that is very much a fool's hope at this point. Yeah, well, you never know. I mean, things things can change, and obviously, United have a huge amount of money to to, to throw yeah. at people. But, um, I mean, do you think he was worth that amount of money? No, I don't either. I don't think he's worth anywhere near that. 
no. And and I um, you know, we've had Kagawa and Henrik Mkhitaryan come in from Dortmund, and yeah, did they look decent players? But did they perform for us? Yeah. No, not at all. And I'm skeptical of most players that come from the Bundesliga. To be quite honest, because I can't think of that many players that came from the German league that actually lit it up in the Premier League. Yeah. Well, I suppose Son probably is, is the most obvious one. Oh, did, where did he come from? Of, of recent time. He come from Germany, so he did. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Um, and I guess um, Bobby Firmino. Yeah, yeah. So, there, I mean, there are some success stories there, but you're right. I mean, it's a, it's a very good league, Germany, but it is at a level below the Premiership, I think, you know, mm. um, in terms of just the intensity and the type of, of play that you're expected. And I, I have no doubt Santo is a, a very good player, um, but you know it's a heck of a risk to spend that yeah. money on a on a player that's only twenty that hasn't really proved it yet. Yeah, and and then you know you've also got the, the fact that if he's if he's it gets a serious injury, yeah. you know we're back back to square one. Well, you know who, who do we put in? We're back to Mason Greenwood playing right wing, which you know is is a decent, is a really good looking. A prospect, yeah, he is. Um, but he's he's not he's not a right winger, in my opinion. Opinion. No, well, he's he's not. I mean, he can, he can do a job there, but I mean, clearly, you would think he's probably going to be the focal point of your attack. Um, mm. You know, going forward, he, he looks a really really good talent. I have to say, he he looks he looks yeah. a lot better than Sancho, in my honest opinion. Yeah. Oh, really? I do. I, I don't, don't go me wrong. I know Sancho's. His stats in the Bundesliga have been outstanding, but mm. and I I can't say that I've actually watched him um, in the Bundesliga. But any time I've seen him play for England, he just hasn't really impressed me. I have to say. Now that's no, you know that doesn't mean he's a bad player, or it doesn't mean that he's not as good as you know, a lot of people think he is. But um, I can see with Greenwood the talent. You can just see it. Yeah, yeah. Sancho. Yeah. I've seen it in flashes, but I'm still not convinced that he's going to be the player that people think he might be. I just have this feeling that he's he's not quite as good as some people are thinking. Mm. So, so I I think you should probably wisely not spend that money on him. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think I think given the fee, it probably is wise, but at the same time, it is. It's just disappointing not to get the player that you, you oh, know, you've been banging on about. For. I mean, I, I, I know that. It, it's really disappointing. I mean, I remember last time, the last one that we had, you know, the whole Dabala, that was the whole big rumour that, that we oh, were yes, going to get yeah. him. And it seemed very, very close at one point. Everybody was going mad um, with excitement. And then it didn't happen, you know, and it, it is really, it's mm. gotten. Um, but to have it drawn out so much, as you guys have experienced over the last few months with Sancho, I can't imagine how tough that must be. Some of us, some of us are very disappointed, but we we've we've ended up with Alex Tellez, Ahmad Diallo slash Torore, yeah. um, Edinson Cavani, and Facundo Pel- Pelistri. Yeah. What's what what? Do you know? I think the jury's out on Cavani. If I'm honest, okay. He's I, I don't I just don't think he's come for like the French league is called the Farmers League. Yeah. You know. It's as simple as that. I mean, that that would be my concern. I mean, I I've no doubt he's a top class striker. I think he's he's mm. excellent. He's very strong. He's you know he can be lethal when he's in the form. Yeah. Um, and I actually think he'd, he potentially would do very well for us. But there is a concern. Obviously, he hasn't played for a while. He's got some injury no. problems, and he's mostly been playing in the French league. And as you yeah. say, that's a real duff league. You know what? Um. It, any stats that people pull up in that league are meaningless, in my opinion. Especially if you pay for PSG, you see exactly, you know, exactly. You play for it. it's like it's like playing for Celtic or something in the Scottish league. You may, yeah, may as well give them the, the medals at, after the first yeah. game. But I mean, Cavani has proved it at the highest level that he's a top striker. Yeah. you know. So um, I think I think that's potentially a very exciting signing for you guys. I think so, and I think. I mean, he is what thirty three and a half, almost. Yeah, coming on thirty four. I, th- I think if he's managed properly, he'd be fine. Um, I just find it underwhelming. Yeah, and I, I, 
you know, people have been saying, oh, well, it's a change in, in the culture that Ollie's trying to build. But I don't I don't think it is. I mm-hmm. think he's very much been signed. Well, he's been signed to put, replace Igalo. Yeah. And very much re- signed as a backup, which is fine. He's, he is a, probably a better player than Igalo. Well, not even probably. Yes. He's probably yeah. not even in doubt. But but I just I also questioned that he's been he's been a free agent all summer. Why? Well, that that's what I found interesting about the transfer because, um, I mean, for all we know, United have planned to sign him on the last day, for weeks and weeks. Yeah, we we, we don't know these things, but but the way it looks, it didn't look good. No, you know, um, it seemed like a desperation signing, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't. But that's the way it looked, and I suppose it's when you're a big club like United, it's all about how how does how do you appear, mm. and it doesn't give huge confidence to you really about you know them having a, a coherent transfer strategy that they're working towards. Yeah, absolutely. I guess we'll we'll not that on the head, and we'll move on to the hopes and expectations. What what well, what do you reckon for Spurs? Where do you think you're going to end up? Um. I mean, as I was saying, I, I started this season full of confidence and then obviously we got beaten really badly by Everton the first game, which totally knocked the stuffing out of me. Um, and most Spurs supporters were just thought, oh, here we go again, this is going to be terrible. Mm. Um, and I, I still wasn't convinced by Jose fully at that point. And then when we got beat by Everton, I, I sort of questioned Jose as well. But I have to say, since that result, we have been absolutely fantastic. Um, now we've got really unlucky with some of the results. Obviously, we we got robbed at Newcastle with that terrible penalty. Um, but the way we're playing at the minute, there's so much confidence in the team. Um, you can see they're buying into what Jose wants us to do. Um, the 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 new players that have come in have slotted in really well and and look fantastic. Um, we've still got Gareth Bale to come into the team. Yeah. Um, I'm really confident. I have to say, I, I, and and then obviously you've got yourselves looking a bit shaky at the minute. Um, mm. Chelsea, I think, look shaky as well. I mean, they're, yeah. they're quite an up and down team. They've got the potential to to beat anyone, but I I think I think their defense isn't good enough. Um, no, I I agree with that. Liverpool and City obviously are still very strong, but City look poor in defense, and Liverpool are starting to look a bit shaky when they didn't. So. As you were saying earlier, it's. I think it's going to be a very open league this year, and um, I think we've as good a chance as any team to to really push for a challenge at the title. I really do. But yeah, um, I I think when you look at our squad and the strength that we have and depth now, um, I think we're as, as good a squad nearly as anybody. Now, obviously, you've got City and Liverpool who probably have stronger teams, stronger squads than us, but um, I think we're, you know, we're not far off them. Well, uh, do you know, I maybe not the manner, but I think the Aston Villa result against Liverpool has been coming for quite a while. Yeah. Do you, do you know, they've, they've what, lost maybe four or five games yeah. in the league in three seasons? Yeah. The the thing about Liverpool, I mean, I, I, I thought this even last season. They started really poorly last year and actually were mm, not, mm. weren't playing well at all. But we're getting, you know, they were getting the rub of the green. They were getting a bit of luck. And they were managing to grind out those results. And then over the course of the season, they started playing better and better and got the confidence up. And by the end, they were, you know, they were absolutely hammering everyone. Um, but I just think there's something about them that, you know, I think they're a little bit fragile. And yeah. I think, you know, be- because people have been playing against them for so long now, you know, people are devising strategies about how to counter how to play. And they're going to come across more difficult matches this year I think and I don't think it would take much for that confidence to maybe drop a level and when, and yeah. then when that happens you know you start getting a run of kind of poor results and then who knows what could happen but I mean they're still a superb side there's no getting around it they're mm. brilliant I, and I guess going back to Spurs another issue you guys might have is managing I mean you played what four games in yeah in the space was it, that, it, what, a week? four games in a week yeah which is ridiculous but Especially at the start of the yeah, season, yeah, and then with with such a limited pre season that everyone's had, um, but I have to say all credit to Jose Mourinho because he, he's really managed that well um, mm, with the mm. the squad rotation that he's done, um, and we've come out with some very very good results over that period. 
which has yeah has been fantastic. So again, that gives confidence as to what the squad is capable of. If it's able to go through those four games and get really positive results out of them, um, you know that that's a really good sign for the future. I think. Yeah, I, I think it just depends on whether it can be replicated throughout the the whole season because he, with the you know Thursday nights, it's yeah. Well, that, that that's absolutely right. I mean, but I said we do have such a strong squad. You know, yeah, generally yeah, two true. players for each position. You know, there's a lot of opportunities for rotation. But obviously, I mean, it comes down to luck at the end of the day. We've been so unlucky with injuries over the last year or two. You know, mm. if we can get a, a season with a fit Kane and a fit Son throughout that entire season, and potentially Bale as well, but who knows with his injury record. But, you know, if it, it, at the very least, if we can keep Kane fit, we've got a chance. We've definitely got a chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess I'll ask you about us. Where, where, what do you reckon to our, our sort of prospects this season? Oh man, it's, it's it's hard to say. I mean, at the minute, you're in an absolute terrible situation. Um, you're you're not playing well. Um, I I think you can turn it around. Undoubtedly, you can. Mm-hmm. You still got a very good team. You've got some. I, I think we yeah, can. You, I mean, he's, He's done it twice already. Yeah, you can't, and you're more than capable of going on a really good, strong run. Um, and all it takes is one or two results, as you know, to turn things around really quickly. Um, yeah, but yeah. I do fear for you at the minute. Um, and mm. the more things, you know, they, they're not getting the wins, they're maybe getting draws or the odd loss here or there. You know, the longer that goes on, the more concerned I would be. I have to say, but you know. You've got the players, you've got some fantastic attacking players, you've got a very strong midfield, and usually you've got a pretty mean defence as well, but um it's just not it's just not working at the minute, it's just not coming together. Um and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but you know, you're capable of turning it around. I mean, when I look at expectations for the league for you guys, um you should be definitely hitting top six, aiming for top mm. four. But I at the minute I wouldn't put you down as a favourite for top four. No, I, I, you know, and I foolishly took on a bet with Alex that with us having Pogba and Fernandez, yeah, coming into this next season, will we'd possibly go for a title challenge? Not, not. I mean, I'm thinking finishing third again, not a proper. We're going to win the league challenge, yeah. but certainly putting pressure on those top two teams for a change, and I just. I don't. I don't know how. I, th- I think it's very difficult to build from a six-one defeat and look towards towards doing that now. Yeah. I mean, you you really need to see a response from those players in the next game. I think. I think the next game yeah. is so important for you guys to yeah. to show. You know, you just mean business, really, and then to get your act together. I mean, you do. I mean, you undoubtedly have some incredibly talented players in that team. Yeah. Definitely. Um, it's just about bringing the best out of them and getting them playing in a way that suits everyone. Yeah. Um, and I don't think Ollie has managed that yet. I mean, he's had a great run, obviously, after the lockdown. And I think that was more because we were more prepared than perhaps other teams were coming back into it. Maybe. I mean, obviously, you had Bruno coming in and that. I, I suppose in the same way Beale coming in has lifted us. Mm. Bruno coming in obviously yeah. had a bit of an impact with you guys. And he played extremely well. Um, I don't feel he has hit the heights yet that he did then. No, um, definitely not. But obviously he has the potential to do that. So um, Pogba, I know I've spoken about Pogba with you before. I don't think he is all that, I have to be honest. I, do you know, I'm starting to... I, the guys in the in the... Um, part about the Spurs game we're talking about it and I, they mentioned someone saying 40 to 45 million for Pogba to buy Sancho and that that was me saying that I said that I I would take well yesterday I would have taken 45 million for Pogba yeah. to get Sancho over the line because I just he, he obviously didn't want to be at the club before and he's only at the club now due to circumstance really yeah. let's be honest is he? I think he is a good player. I think he's a great player, and I do like I do like him as a person. But it's just not working. It's not working. It's as simple as that. No, it's not. 
I mean, he's very talented, very, very talented. But it's just little moments in games you can do something really spectacular and you think, wow, that's that's fantastic. But, yeah. you know, they're few and far between. And a, mm. a lot of the time I look at him and he doesn't seem to be really that committed to what to no. what he's doing. And, I, I, you know, I think the last time I actually saw him run a game, you know, be the main man in a yeah. game was probably when Oli took over from Mourinho, which is about 18 yeah. months ago now. Yeah. I, f- I mean, if, I feel for you guys, could, I, I mean, if Pogba was in my club, I would be absolutely going mad about him. Um, mm-hmm. Just I, I would be so annoyed with him. Um, but, you know, obviously he's very talented and there is always the possibility of him doing something amazing in the game, you know, but I just don't know. Again, I think he's overpaid for him. And I'm not sure, as you were saying, you know, what would you get for him now? Well, that, exactly. I mean, now, specifically, I I think 45 million would yeah. be a very fair price. Very fair. Yeah, and really he should be in his peak now, you know, was he 27? Yeah. You know, that this should be him uh, being pretty much at the top of his game. Mm, and it, it's it's yeah. just not. No, he's not. C- certainly not for us. No, and it's frustrating because you, you just know if he goes somewhere else, he, he'd he probably be amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, you, you know, that's just... Uh, such is life, isn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, some sometimes it works out for players and, and sometimes it doesn't, you know, and uh, sometimes, a, you know, a club's a good fit for somebody and, and sometimes they're not. I mean, you'd think with his background at United's, United would be the obvious club for him and he would be really happy, but it just hasn't worked out. I don't know why. No, well, and then there's always, you never go back. Well, the, yeah, that's true. You know, I, I think there were rumours that we were after or were being offered Ericsson from Inter. Uh, oh, really? That's that's what the rumour was and we we didn't go for it, which I was very pleased about, even though I loved Ericsson. As you said, yeah. I, I just don't think it would have been good for anybody if he'd come back. No, no. Right. Well, yeah. I guess we'll we'll sort of leave it there. I'm thoroughly disappointed. And yeah, I'm sure you are. You're you're quite pleased. I am. Yeah, with, I'm pleased with your prospects. I am at the back. And do you know what? I'm pleased for you because Spurs don't often get this, and it won't be long. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, I, at the minute, I'm confident. If you talk to me in three weeks, uh, you know, it could all have gone. You know, tits up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, is the life of a Spurs fan. You know, I, I always expect um, misery and, dis- and yeah. disappointment. So, <laughs> anytime there's the slightest hint of something good happening, you know, I'm on it like a flash. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sort of learning to live like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't recommend it. <laughs> no, no. It's, yeah, it's very stress inducing. It is, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I guess that, that's good night from me. Yes, uh, and good night for me. Thanks for inviting me on again. You're more than welcome. <laughs>